So let's begin mock test paper two for income tax. Uh, so straight away we'll enter into multiple choice questions. Mr. Pankaj, an Indian resident, purchased a residential house property at Kanpur on 20th August 1998, which means before 1st April 2001. And that to remember, this is an immobile property. When it is an immobile property purchased before 14 2000, uh, 2001, the fair market value in 14 2001 can be taken as cost of acquisition provided it shall not exceed stamp duty value on that date. Uh, for 20 lakhs he purchased. The fair market value and the stamp duty value are 28.5 and 25. So cost of acquisition will be 25. Actual cost, fair market value or STV. Among these three, uh, I can say, so cost or FM, whichever is higher, but restricted to stamp duty value. So that's it, 25 lakhs is the cost of acquisition. So, okay, 25 lakhs respectively. On 5th, uh, 5th, 5th February, 2016, Mr. Pankaj entered into an agreement with Gyan for sale of such property for 61 lakh and received an amount of 2.5 lakh in advance. However, Gyan did not pay the balance, so he perfeited. Perfeature of advance on or after 1st April 2014. It is straight away taxable under section 56 as income from other sources. If the perfeature is before 1st April 2014, that amount has to be reduced from the cost of acquisition while computing capital gains. But anyhow, here the perfeature is after 2014, so we have to tax it under other sources. So, we don't know whether they are asking this or not, we don't know, just we'll see. On, for, on 10th May 2023, Mr. Pankaj sold the house property to Mr. Rohan for 1.5 crore. Oh, oh, ultimately in 23-24, that is a year of transfer. So at what price? 1.5 crore. When the stamp duty value was 2 crore. Okay, you see, stamp duty value is more than 110% of consideration. 110% of consideration is 1.65 lakh. Yes, so 1.65 crore. So more than that it is sold. So which means stamp duty value itself is full value of consideration. This is as per section 50B. Further, he purchased two residential house properties at Delhi and Mumbai. Now he sold house property and invested in two houses. First of all, if the capital gain is not exceeding 2 crore, then only you can invest in two houses. If the capital gain is more than 2 crore, you cannot invest in, you can only invest in one house. Remember total capital gain exemption under 54 cannot exceed 10 crore. As per Finance Act 2023. He purchased two houses, one in Delhi for 57 lakhs, uh, 57 lakhs each on 28th September 2024. He purchased it on 28th September, which means after 23-24, within six months he purchased. By the way, this SSC, I don't know whether he is having business income or not. I think, uh, you know, even after reading this information, there is no business income for the SSC, which means there is no audit provision applicable. The due date applicable for the SSC is 31st July 2024. The due date for filing IT written under 139 subsection 1 is 31st July. Yes or no? Now within, within the due date for filing IT written, you must invest this either in the actual asset or you must invest in capital gain account scheme. So by the time of filing due date, by the time of filing, by the time of due date for filing IT written, either the amount should have been invested in the actual asset or it must have been deposited in capital gain account scheme from that you can withdraw and use. Here, he didn't deposit by the time of due date, if you observe. He cannot get 54 exemption. The date plays an important role, remember. Next, we'll see. We'll see whether any further information. On 31st January 2025, which means 24-25, that next year, Mr. Pankaj decided to sell the house property at Mumbai to his brother Gaurav for 58 lakhs. Okay, so to his brother he sold 58 lakhs. From whom? 25,000 was received in cash on 15th January as an advance for signing the agreement to sale. Since advance is received in cash, stamp duty value on the date of advance provision and all will not apply. Straight away stamp duty value on the date of registration will apply. Sale deed was registered on 30 March on receipt of the balance amount through account pay check from Gaurav. The stamp duty value of the house property on 31st January 2025 and 30th March was 61 lakh and uh, 64 lakh. So, stamp duty value on the date of agreement, this will not apply. Getting it? Because 31st January is the date on which he decided to serve. That is agreement date. So, that date will not apply. This stamp duty value only will apply. So, 64 lakhs provision only will apply. Cost inflation index, previous year, all that they have given. We'll see. Based on the facts of the case scenario given above, choose the most appropriate answer. 
what shall be the indexed cost of acquisition of the residential property at Kanpur for computation of capital gains in the hands of the Pankaj? So, first of all, what is the cost of acquisition in 25 lakh? 28.5 or 20, 28 or 25, 20, whichever is higher, but not exceeding standard duty value, 25 lakhs, multiplied by year of transfer, 348, divided by, since he purchased it before 2001, base year itself, so 100, is equal to how much? So, 25 lakhs, 25 lakhs, multiplied by 348, divided by 100, is equal to 87 lakhs, that's it. The answer is over. You know, capital gains, no? The provision discussion looks so strong, so lengthy, so complicated. But actual problem solving will be very easy in capital gains. I don't know how many of you have observed it. The amount of capital gains taxable for assessment year 24-25 in the hands of Pankaj per sale of residential house property at Kanpur. Okay, so now you see, here they are twisting you. Here, when he invested in Kanpur, no? When he invested in the property in Kanpur, he did not claim exemption. Why? Exemption itself will not come because he purchased it after due date. After due date. With, within the due date, if at all, he invested in capital gain account scheme and from that he withdrawn and purchased. See, he purchased it within two years from the rate of transfer. But before the due date for filing IT return, you must have deposited the amount in the capital gain account scheme. But he didn't deposit. So, he, he cannot claim exemption at all. Now, if he did not claim exemption, subsequently the same asset is transferred. Sale value minus cost of acquisition is equal to capital gain. Now, you see, let us see, when he purchased his Kanpur property, by the way, 28th September 2024, he purchased. And uh, when he ultimately sold 30th March, the gap is less than less than 24 months. It's a short term. At what price it is sold? 60, so at what price he sold at 58? But uh, full value of consideration, 64 or 58 lakhs, whichever is higher, 64 minus, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. So, 60 uh, actual consideration is 58 into 110 percentage, which means 63.8. Ah, so, 58 plus 110 percentage. So, 58 plus 10 percent you add. 63.8 only it is coming. So, since stamp duty value is more than 110 percent of actual consideration, 64 only will apply. Minus, what is the cost of acquisition? 57 lakhs. So, is equal to 64 minus 57 is equal to 7 lakhs is the capital gain. That's it. So, 7 lakhs is the capital gain. Just a minute. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I am answering this question actually. What would be the capital gains for assessment year 25-26 in the hands of Pankaj for sale of residential house property at Mumbai? Kanpur is old property. I am sorry, not this question, but this question right now what I answered. So, the amount of capital gain for assessment year 25-26, assessment year 25, means previous year 24-25. In previous year 24-25, what he sold? This Mumbai property only, na? This Mumbai property, you see? You see here, decided to sell the property at Mumbai. Mumbai property, Kanpur property means first original property. I will come back to that later. Anyhow, I discussed this, right? So, how much is the answer? Just now I computed, 7 lakh. Yeah, let's, let's stick this. Let's stick this. I'm sorry. Sorry for confusing you. Uh, B. Second question. Second question we'll see. This is regarding original capital asset which he sold. Original house which he sold. So, what is the cost of acquisition? 87 lakh, right? At what price he sold actually? At what price he sold? Original property? 2 crore. Ah, okay. So, stamp duty. Actually, he sold it for, he sold it for 1.5 crore. But stamp duty value 2 crore. But I told you, stamp duty value only applicable 2 crore. So, 2 crore, uh, just a minute, 2 crore minus cost of acquisition, just now we computed, 87 lakh is equal to 113. What is the capital gain? 113 lakh, exactly. Some students might say it is, it is uh, 113 lakh minus, you know, amount invested, 57 lakhs minus 57 lakhs. Like that they will compute and there is a possibility of getting 1 lakh negative answer. No. Some students what they do, 113 lakh minus only one, one capital gain, they will claim exemption. Getting it. So, actual capital gain is 113. He cannot claim exemption for the 54 because he purchased both the houses, Mumbai and another property, two houses, both after the due date for filing ID return. Before due date, if at all, he deposited in capital gain account scheme and invested. No, that's it. So, he didn't claim exemption. He can't claim exemption. And when he can't claim exemption, lock-in period and all will not apply. If lock-in period will not apply, if the new house is sold once again with, you know, sold, no provision of retaxation because he didn't claim exemption. Next. What is the amount taxable under 56 subsection to clause 10 in the hands of Gaurav? So, for Gaurav, how much it is taxable? Here, many students, I'm telling you, they'll do a mistake. Many, they will do a mistake. Now, Gaurav purchased from whom? His brother. 
when i purchase from brother whether at a discounted price or full price or zero price it doesn't matter even if some gift portion is involved it is fully exempted so the amount taxable in the hands of gaurav is nil what is the answer nil because gaurav is purchasing a property at inadequate consideration from brother the inadequate portion may be some amount is there but it is exempted why because he is purchasing from relative from relative any gift amount you received gift can be without consideration or inadequate consideration exempted next what shall be the tax credit available with the pankaj with respect to the sale of property at kanpur during 23 24 so original property sold right 2 crore now buyer is paying consideration to this fellow right 1.5 crore is sold 2 crores the stamp value when the buyer is paying consideration under 194 ia One person will be deducted now on stamp duty value or consideration whichever is higher. So two crore or one point five whichever is higher two. One percent of two crore means two lakhs. So what is the tax credit will be available with Pankaj? Assuming tax was fully deducted by Rohan, two lakhs. That's it. Actually, it's easy, leh. This question is quite easy. Then uh, sixth question is Pankaj required to file the return of income for the assessment year twenty four twenty five. Assessment year twenty four twenty five is Pankaj required to file? Obviously his income no, his income is more than basic exemption. But capital gain is one one three lakh man. Now here you see the answers were poor. Yes, his since his total income exceeds basic exemption limit. No, not to correct. Yes, yes, yes. Tax deducted is exceeding twenty five thousand. Yes, this is also one of the reason. But this is the last reason we will see. This is not the primary reason. Yes, since his total income before exemption under fifty four exceeds basic exemption limit. Before claiming fifty four, since his income is more than basic exemption, first of all, this asset is not eligible for fifty four exemption itself. So this point I will not check. Since his income is exceeding not since his income is exceeding basic exemption limit, obviously I will have to file the return of income. This is the main answer. That's it. Yeah. So fifth one also yeah, and sixth one also yeah. That's it. You please check with the answers, ma. Or else I'll once check better. B D B A A A A A A B D B right? Just a minute. One B actually. Am I am I checking the correct uh, one? Income tax. Sir? So first one. Oh sorry sir, I wrote it as. Yeah, actually, I picked the correct answer here. I wrote B, okay, B, one B, two D, correct, two D, correct, and three uh, B. Yes, here I didn't write. That's it. Yeah, almost all our answers are correct. Next, second question, Mrs. Deepika, wife of Mr. Santosh, started a business of trading in beauty products on fifteenth July, twenty twenty. Three. Oh, she started business on fifteenth July, twenty twenty-three. Okay, she invested five lakhs in the business on fifteenth July, twenty twenty-three, out of gift received from her husband. On the date of beginning of the sole proprietary concern itself, gifted asset is participated. So for that year, whatever profit is available, that profit in the subject to capital invest in the subject to capital investment ratio will be transferred in the hands of the husband. Then what she did, Mr. Santosh? Okay, from from her husband, she invested. Four lakhs from her own savings on the same date. She earned a profit of totally nine lakhs. Or a nine lakhs uh, divided by total investment nine lakhs. Gifted amount is five lakhs. Uh. Now, which of the following is the which of the following is correct? Share of profit of five lakhs is includable in the hands of husband because it is from gifted asset. And share of profit of four lakhs is included in the hands of Mrs. Zipika. That's it. Correct option is B is correct. That and all ignore. Then Mr. X, a resident, forty-seven years, has a salary income computed. Computed salary income is seven lakh twenty-five. And agriculture income one lakh for the year twenty three twenty four. Compute his tax liability for twenty four twenty five. If at all he is paying tax under default tax regime. Gone. I'll tell you here we need to do a working big working first. You know computation of basic tax. Computation of basic tax. Agriculture income is there first. Aggregation concept will apply seven lakh twenty five thousand plus agriculture income one lakh. On this we need to compute tax. On this sir. We need to compute tax. Eight lakh twenty-five thousand, right? So first three lakh zero. Next three lakh five percent. Next three lakhs actually, but two point two five only is there. Ten percent, correct? Right? Eight lakh twenty-five thousand minus six lakhs. Okay, into ten percentage. Three lakhs into five percentage. So totally thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Step two. 
basic exemption limit is what 250000 plus agriculture income is what 1 lakh remember if agriculture income is less than 5000 aggregation will not apply further if non agriculture income which is salary income in this case non agriculture income if it is less than basic exemption limit also aggregation concept will not apply remember these two points so 250 plus 3 so in that no in on this first let us compute so in this no up to 3 lakh zero 50000 at 5 percent is how much it is 2500 so step 3 so what is the basic tax actually step 1 minus step 2 how much it is 35,000 is the basic tax okay so basic tax is equal to 35,000 plus add surcharge 0 35,000 minus rebate rebate under section 87a now this again working note 2 now working note 2 what first of all step 1 rebate under 87a especially if the SSC is following default tax regime you see here the SSC is paying tax on a DTR okay so step number one total income minus sub total income minus sub 7 lakhs up to 7 lakhs we have 25,000 rebate right so that's what 7.25 lakh minus 7 lakh is equal to 25,000 step number two what is the tax on what is the basic what is the tax on total income just now we computed what is the tax we computed 35,000 we got array up, if at all I have 7 lakhs income I need not pay sim, single rupee tax but if I since I have 25,000 you are asking me to pay 35,000 tax but 25,000 income so step 3 is step, is step 3 is step 2 is more than is step 2 more than step 1 yes obviously because of agree because of the 25,000 income you are asking me to pay 35,000 tax but I have only 25,000 extra income so 10,000 I will not pay if you want you take my 25,000 income so step 2 minus step 1 is equal to rebate if step 2 is more than step 1 then only step 2 minus step 1 suppose if step 2 is less than step 1 no rebate so 10,000 is rebate so uh, 25,000 is a balance tax plus 4% is equal to 26,000 is the tax. That's it. The answer is A. So 2B3A. Just I will see. 2B3A. That's it. Next. Over. Desk, uh, over. So these questions are over. 1, 2, 3 marks. 3 plus 2, 12. 15 marks over. 15 marks we completed within 17 minutes. Sir. Very good. Next. Up. <coughs> Mr. Sunil, aged 48 years. A resident Indian has furnished the following particulars for the year ended 31st March 2024. First, let us see what actual question they are asking. You are requested to compute total income and tax liability of Sunil for the assessment year 2024-25 in the manner so that he can make maximum tax savings. Oh, again, first 115 BAC, in that approach we compute. Then we compute tax amount. Then from that, we will derive a normal tax regime, optional tax regime, nothing but normal mode. On the tax amount will compute. If AMT is also applicable, AMT mode also will compute tax. Accordingly, we will decide. In MT, MTP1, first problem also same. 15 marks question. Just a minute. Yes. <clears throat> so, let's continue. So, Mr. Sunil, aged 48 years, is a resident Indian, has furnished the following particulars for the year uh, 31st March 2024. He occupies ground floor of his residential building and has let out first floor of residential house at an annual rent of 2,95,000. He has paid municipal taxes of 20,000 for the current year. Both these floors are of equal size. I think fair rent, expected rent, that entire information is not given. This actual rent itself, I will consider it as a uh, gross annual value. Uh, so, uh, yeah, correct. So, just uh, income from house property. Okay. So, like, uh, uh, so one is ground floor, ground floor for his residential purpose. Okay. So, ground floor and first floor. Ground floor is self-occupied portion and first floor is let out portion. So, gross annual value, it is not applicable. It's not zero. It's not applicable, first of all. 2,95,000 minus municipal taxes paid. For the entire building, it is uh, 25,000. So, for each, each of them, we need to allocate, right? So, here no allocation. Here no allocation. So, 12,500. So, what is the net annual value? 2,95,000 minus 12,500 is equal to? 2,82,500 and this is 0. Net annual value is equal to 0. Multiplied by 30%. 84,750. This is not applicable. And there is no interest on loan point which is given. 2,82,500 minus 84,750 is equal to 1,97,750. This is the income from house property. Remember, uh, when we are following default tax regime, interest on loan cannot be claimed as deduction for SOP. Whereas for LOP, interest on loan can be claimed as deduction. But house property loss, if at all, is there. You can't set off with uh, other heads of income. Just I will see, is there any interest? 
it is there i'm sorry in the second point it is there as per interest certificate from hdfc bank he paid 150 as interest and 80000 towards principal remember principal repayment is eligible for atc but we are computing income under 115 bsc at first so no deduction under atc but 150000 whatever interest he paid no that is eligible and the loan is borrowed for the residential so 150 is eligible for deduction that too out of this how much is eligible eligible for sop you can't claim deduction interest for a 115 bsc can you claim interest deduction for sop no so just a minute i'll revise slightly this answer so 30 percent interest on loan here i will say not applicable because 115 bsc so 75 000. so how much is the answer 2 lakh 82 500 minus 84 750 so 2 lakh 82 500 minus 30 percent minus 75 000 is equal to 1 lakh 22 this is income from house property income from house property 1 lakh 722 first we are computing under 1 for bac remember next he owns a rest, an industrial undertaking established in sej which had commenced operations during the year 1920 total turnover of the undertaking was 400 lakhs which include 150 lakhs from the export turnover so which means domestic turnover is 250 lakh out of 150 only 120 lakhs have been received in india first we are computing under 115 bsc which means 10 year deduction and all we don't claim we'll discuss 10 year deduction at the last of the problem in convertible foreign exchange which means how much of the export property is exempted first we'll see uh, on or before 30th november that, sorry 30th september within six months from the end of the financial year how much of the export turnover is received in convertible foreign exchange 120 lakhs out of 150 this industrial undertaking fulfills all the conditions under 10 year profit from this industry is 40 lakh total industry is 40 lakh so total industry entire industry is 40 so he wants you know SEZ which has commenced operation and uh, in that export turnover is how much 150 but 150 is not eligible only 120 is eligible total turnover is 400 so how much is eligible 12 lakhs only is eligible for deduction and that too he started business in 1920 right 1920 is the first year 2021, 21, 22, 22, 23, 23, 24. Right now we are doing for the last year. So which means 100% reduction he will get 12 lakhs. But, but, first we are computing under 115 BSE, which means we cannot claim deduction. Next. He, uh, so how much is taxable technically speaking under PGBP without 115 BSE? Enter 40 lakhs is taxable. So what is the PGBP income? Entire 40 lakhs is taxable. Entire 40 lakhs. Because... 115 BAC, uh, no 10AA deduction. Correct? Huh? Next. Um, he employed 20 new employees for the said industrial undertaking during the year 23 24. Okay, 20 new employees. Out of 20, 12 were employed on 1st May 2023 for monthly emoluments of 18,000 rupees and remaining were employed on 1st September. Remember, even though we are going, we, even though we are declaring income under 115 BAC, we can claim these deductions ATCCD subsection 2, ATCCH sub subsection 2 Agnipat scheme, ATJJAA. Only these three sections related deductions we can still claim even if the SSC is declaring income under uh, income under default tax raising 115 BAC. So, so he additional employee cost. This is nothing but information given for additional employee cost. We'll do one thing. I'll come back to ATJJA deduction later, or else we'll compute and keep. Okay, we'll compute and keep. 20 employees 12 employees were employed on 1st may 1st may means obviously 11 months they worked and remaining were employed on 1st september is this company in apparel industry no it is it is not in apparel industry also therefore it is eligible for atjjaa deduction it is eligible for atjjaa so 1st september monthly emoluments this this is not eligible for original employee cost so 12 employees are only eligible 12 employees 11 months multiplied by what is the monthly emolument that they are paying 18,000 and remember they are directly paid to bank account so it is eligible for deduction into 30 percentage how much it is 12 into 11 months this is 11 months ma multiplied by 18,000 multiplied by 30 percentage 7 lakh 12,800 this is the ATJJAA deduction even if the SSE is claiming 115 BAC deduction he earned 30,000 rupees, 40,000 rupees as interest on savings bank deposit and fixed deposit. By the way, this fellow is 48 years, not a senior citizen. So, ATTTA deduction is available. If at all, it is a normal regime. Normal regime. But default tax regime, no deduction. So, entirely income from other sources, how much? 70,000. 
सेवेंटी थाउजेंड नेक्स्ट ही आल्सो सोल्ड हिज वेकेंट लैंड ऑन फर्स्ट डिसेंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री फॉर फिफ्टीन लैक्स द स्टैम्प ड्यूटी वैल्यू एट द टाइम ऑफ ट्रांसफर वॉज सिक्सटीन लैक्स ओके सो वेकेंट लैंड ही सोल्ड ट्रांसफर ऑफ कैपिटल असेट सो वॉट इट सिंस सिंस स्टैम्प ड्यूटी वैल्यू इज नॉट मोर देन वन टेन परसेंट ऑफ द कंसिडरेशन full value of consideration is only actual consideration 50b provision so this is a capital gains issue so full value of consideration is how much 15 lakh only we will take not 16 because 15 plus 10 percent 16.5 it should be but a stamp duty value is only 16 here then stamp duty value is less than 110 percent of the actual consideration actual consideration will only be the full value of consideration this land was acquired by him on 15th october for 2.8 lakh The fair market value on first April was four point eight, and stamp duty value on the said date was four lakhs. So let us take four lakhs as cost of acquisition. He had incurred registration expenses at that time. At the time of purchase, registration expenses are all ignorable. At the time of transfer, any expenses are we shall consider. So this is irrelevant information. So four lakhs we will consider. Minus indexed cost of acquisition four lakhs multiplied by this year three forty eight divided by hundred is equal to so four lakhs multiplied by three forty eight divided by hundred is equal to. Thirteen lakh, thirteen point nine two lakh. So what is the capital gain actually? Fifteen lakh minus thirteen lakh ninety two thousand is equal to one not eight only capital gain. Okay, easy only. He paid insurance premium forty thousand to a life insurance policy of his son who is not dependent on him. For children in ATC, children there is no dependency. Spouse and children you can pay insurance premium, life insurance, uh, life insurance. So ATC reduction. But if at all we are going with one on five BAC, no ATC reduction. Remember that. That's it. Answer is over. So long term capital gain is how much? One lakh eight thousand. So other long term capital gain we considered. Other sources income we considered. This is income from other sources. This we considered. AD JJ AA deduction we will consider it in the last. Uh, this income we considered without one one five BSC housing related information we considered. Now what is the gross total income? What is the gross total income? One lakh twenty two seven fifty plus PGBP income forty forty lakh. Other sources seventy thousand long term capital gain one lakh eight so forty three lakh seven fifty is the gross total income minus eighty J J A A deduction when you are claiming chapter six A remember long term capital gain is not eligible for chapter six A keep that in mind but anyhow here since other incomes are so so much you can claim eighty J J A A deduction how much is the eighty J J A A deduction we computed eighty J J A A seven lakh twelve thousand eight hundred how much is that. Seven lakh twelve thousand eight hundred is equal to forty three lakh seven fifty minus seven lakh twelve thousand eight hundred is equal to thirty five lakh eighty seven thousand nine fifty. This is the total income under one one five B A C. So let's compute tax on this. Tax on this. So tax on above under one one five B A C. Under one one five B A C. How much is the income? Thirty five lakh. Eighty-seven thousand nine fifty. So in this no more than fifteen lakhs. So how much is there? Twenty lakh eighty-seven thousand nine fifty. It is tied by tax at what rate? Thirty percentage. So twenty lakh eighty-seven thousand nine fifty multiplied by thirty percentage. Six lakh twenty-six thousand three eighty-five. One second, I am computing twenty lakh eighty-seven thousand six twenty-six. Okay. On balancing figure in the initial fifteen lakhs, the total tax amount comes how much? One lakh fifty. So total basic tax is how much? This one lakh fifty ma. Seven lakh seventy-six thousand three eighty-five. Plus is surcharge applicable? I am sorry. By the way, there is a long-term capital gain. I forgot. I forgot. Sorry, sorry. There is a long-term capital gain. Ah, uh, just a minute. So in this no. In this no, this is a long term capital gain under one one two, not one one two A. Remember one one two A means up to one lakh exempt. Here it is a land which he sold. So thirty. So what you need to consider is thirty five lakhs minus one lakh one lakh eight thousand is equal to thirty five eighty seven nine fifty minus one lakh eight thousand is equal to ah thirty four lakh seventy nine thousand nine fifty. I think whatever mistake I did, you also do the same in exam. So remember, remember whenever you are computing tax, is there any special income sir? Ah, uh, long term capital gain, lottery income like that you see. Short term capital gain three point one a, long term capital gain one or two a. Is there any special income like this? You check specifically. So now, now thirty four seventy nine nine fifty minus fifteen lakhs is equal to nineteen lakh seventy nine thousand nine fifty. This is taxable at thirty percentage. Is equal to how much? So five lakh ninety three thousand nine eighty five. And up to fifteen lakh normal income, one lakh fifty thousand, 
and on long term capital gain 1 lakh 8000 at the rate of 20 percentage is equal to 21600 so all put together plus 1 lakh uh, 50,000 plus 593, 985 is equal to 7,65,000, 585. Add surcharge. Since total income is, since total income is less than 50 lakh, no surcharge. No rebate also. Getting it. So, straight away, 4% education, sir. Total tax level becomes 7,96,208. I will round up to 210. I will round up to 210. Just for not wasting time, I will just see the answer. Okay. I am confident of my answer, but I will just see whether my answer is correct or not. 7,96,210, correct only. So just if at all, because I do I do mistakes in uh, sometimes when I'm entering number, because my focus is most on the explanation. That's why. Fine. So now we computed under 115 BAC. Now let's compute income under default, sorry, normal tax receipt. What is the income that we computed? Computation of income under normal tax receipt. So total income as per default tax receipt, how much is the total income? 35 lakh 87,950. 950 once again i will check 30 35 like 87 950 okay for this for this from this what are the deductions i did not claim 10 a reduction i can claim that in normal tax receipt i can claim 10 a reduction rate how much 10 a reduction we got 1 lakhs sir no how much we got in 10 a 12 lakhs we got deduction then what other deductions we did not claim ah house property 75000 we can claim deduction na house property actually if at all i claim this uh, self occupied property also if at all i claimed this is 75000 under self occupied property here i will write it with al alternative color so normal tax regime 75000 deduction you can claim so these two i can set off in normal tax regime income from house property what is the income so 112750 minus 75000 is equal to how much 47750 only would be my house property income but instead of that I can I can use this right I can I can reduce right because in house property there is a balance so what I will do 75 entire I'll reduce entire I'll reduce so uh, 24b for self occupied property how much it is 75,000 I will reduce okay then what else is there which I did not claim deduction ah uh, ATC 80,000 principal repayment ATC is there fine so house property adjustment is over ATC now we need to consider 80JJ we already considered, IFOS, 80TTA we should consider, then this we already considered, 80C also we should consider, that's it, only these three adjustments, so I think, I think until now, income related adjustments we completed, so now we'll see, 35, 87, 950 minus 12 lakhs minus 75,000 is equal to gross total income as per normal tax regime, 23 lakh 12,950 minus ATC life insurance premium paid. How much it is? Uh? How much it is? Uh? Uh, 40,000. 40,000. Minus uh, 80 TTA. 10,000 he can claim deduction, right? Uh? Uh, then what else is there? One more thing. ATC, 80 TTA. Uh, one more is there. Sorry. ATC principal repayment is also there. Na? Principal repayment is also there. Na? Just a minute. ATC only. Principal repayment on housing loan. Principal repayment on housing loan. How much is the principal repayment? 80,000 towards principal repayment. That I can claim. Remember, entire ATC deduction put together shall not exceed one and a half. Here it is since 1.2. I can still claim. So, just a minute once. Let me check once. Yes. Yes. And 80 JJ, by the way. 80 JJ, yeah, yeah. Now, here many students are having a question. Uh, if the SSC is claiming 10 AA deduction, can he still claim 80 JJA deduction? Yes. If the SSC is claiming 35 AD deduction, entire chapter 6A heading C is prohibited. If the SSC is claiming 10 AA deduction, 35 AD is prohibited, 80 IA series is prohibited. 80 JJAA is not prohibited. Getting it? Yeah. Remember, yeah, 80 JJAA, you can still claim, even if you have claimed 10 AA deduction. No problem at all. But 35 if at all you claim reduction, entire chapter 6 heading C is prohibited. Heading C, what are all comes? ATIA, IB, IAB, IAC, all that will come. AT, JJA, QQB, RRB also will come. But remember, for 10 AA, there is no such condition. So for 10 AA, AT, JJA can be claimed. So 7,12,800. Wrong. Because we already started with the total income only. 
whatever total income this total income is computed after reducing this already so no need to reduce once again here suppose no if you started with gross total income what is the gross total income 43 lakh 750 if you started with that getting it then income adjustments then all deductions set it and you claim then this will come but i started with already 80 jj a deduction the best presentation is not this i am using shortcut here the best presentation is first to start with gross total income which is 43 lakh 750 with that you start so here you can claim so i will do one thing so 43 lakh uh, 43 lakh 750 i will also start with that 43 lakh 750 now i will claim here 7 lakh how much is the 80 jja 7 lakh 12800 7 lakh 12000 800 that's it over answer is over 23 uh, sorry not this so here gross total income under default tax regime is how much 43 lakhs so 43 lakh 750 minus 12 lakhs minus self sop adjustment so 30 lakh 25750 minus 40000 atc 80000 atc 10000 80 tta 7 lakh 12800 how much it is 21 lakh 82,950. This is the total income under normal tax regime. On this, we will compute tax. He is a normal citizen. Remember, two and a half lakh only basic exemption. More than 10 lakhs, how much is there? 11 lakh 82,950, which is taxable at 30 percentage. 11 lakh 82,950 into 30 percentage is equal to 3 lakh 54, 3 lakh 54, 80, 85. Up to, up to 10 lakh. What is that? A tax amount fixed. Again wrong. Again wrong. I know you are you, where, where we went wrong tell me ah long term capital gain exactly so in this long term capital gain is 1 lakh 8000 which is taxable at 20 percentage what are the other incomes normal income how much 21 82 950 minus 1 lakh 8000 so 20 lakh 74 950 if at all any of you are in link very good so on this how much is the tax uh, on this how much is the tax so more than 10 lakhs income is taxable at 30 percentage so so 3 lakh 22,485 on 10 lakhs. On 10 lakhs, what is the tax amount? 1 lakh 12,500. So, what is the total tax? What is the total tax now? So, what is the total tax? 1 lakh 8,000 multiplied by 20% is equal to uh, 21,600. Total tax will be 21,600 plus uh, 112,500 plus 322,485 is equal to 4 lakh 56,580. Got so total, you know, basic tax under normal tax is, is what 456585 plus surcharge and all will not apply. So it's directly 4% sister 474,850. That's it. Now you see normal tax regime tax is less than default tax regime, which is more than which is around 7.9. So which is better for the SSC normal, but wait under normal tax regime, SSC claim a deduction under 10 AA. Which means if an SSE who claim a deduction under 10 AA or income based reductions or AD JJA deduction and uh, all these uh, under entire chapter 6A heading C or an SSE who claimed 10 AA or an SSE who claimed 35 AD, all these incomes you have to add back to get adjusted total income, correct? Huh? You see now. So computation of now, now 115 JEE provision we are applying. Computation of adjusted total income. So normal income is how much? Normal tax regime, how much is the income? Remember 115 JE, all right minimum tax is applicable only if the SSE is in, only if the SSC declaring income under uh, normal tax regime. If the SSC is declaring income under default tax regime, all right minimum tax provision will not apply. 2182 950. 2182 950. Further remember, 115 JE is applicable only if the adjusted total income is more than 20 lakhs. If the adjusted total income is less than 20 lakhs, this provision will not apply. So add back. 10 AA deduction, how much it is? 1 lakh. Add back, ADJJ AA deduction, 7 lakh 12,800. So, 21 lakh, 2182, 950 plus 12 lakhs plus 712,800 is equal to 40 lakh 95,750. This is adjusted total income. If at all adjusted total income is more than 50 lakhs, such as also applicable. Remember that point also. There also marginal relief and all you have to compute. Just a minute. Yes. Now, 40 lakh 95, right? Multiplied by what is the alternate minimum tax rate? 18.5%. 40, 95, 40, 95. Just a minute. Again, here, sorry. In this, long term capital gain is there, na? Long term capital gain is how much? 1 lakh 8,000. Every time, whenever capital gains is there, remember that. Remaining income is how much? 40, 95, 750 minus 1 lakh 8,000. How much it is? 
39 lakh 87,750. Now this is taxable at 18.5 percentage. Now calculate. This is uh, 26,000. Uh, so 108,000 multiplied by 20. 21,600. Sorry. 21,600. How much is this? 3987,750 into 18.5 percentage. Wow. 7,37,733. So put together how much? 7,59,333. Plus 4 percent says sir. That's a general will not apply. 7,89,710 rupee. So, minim, alternate minimum tax that you have to pay 789. Since alternate minimum tax is less than, since alternate minimum tax is less than, uh, 115 BAC 7,96,000. I will go with AMT itself. Even otherwise also, I will go with AMT. Why? Because in AMT, I will get AMT credit. So decision making for SSC should be this versus what is the tax payable under normal tax regime without AMT, before AMT. That is the best comparison for, that is the best comparison because in future, in future, you may, you may have a normal tax may be higher than your, uh, you know, AMT. In such a case that excess normal tax you can set up with the AMT credit, best layer. AMT, whatever AMT is there, this much always you should pay by cash. Suppose if at all your normal tax is more than AMT in the next year, further year, that excess amount can be paid with the AMT set off. So that's it. I will go with the normal tax regime. That's the decision. Normal tax regime. So that's it. I'll just see the answer. 796. So 2182, 950. Normal in total income as per normal regime. 2192. 2182, 950. Next. Uh, what is the tax on that 474,850? Yes, absolutely correct. Then under default AMT liability 78820. We got also same. Huh? 78820 we did not get. Uh, why? Just a minute. in adjusted total income there is a long term capital gain right on the long term capital gain on the adjusted total income 10% 20% tax rate should be applicable right so I think alternate minimum tax we, we ignore all the special rates all that I think so so th there we did a mistake there we did a mistake in alternate minimum tax there is no separation there is no treatment for uh, normal rate special rate that and all gone straight away AMT rate will apply. AMT rate will apply. I think this kind of question is not there anywhere in, for us. I think this RTP is best example. I mean this MTP to itself is a best example. So this is also tax. This is also the tax data. 18.5 percentage only. 18.5. So let's see once 115 JE provision. Just a minute. I will see It'll just for an idea. I don't know how many of you get this idea or not. Get this thought or not. One one five JEE. I'm just checking. Actual main provision is one one five JC. Yes, one one five JC. Of course, for International Financial Service Center, that area how it is not there in CA Inter. Yeah, correct. Since adjusted total income shall be deemed to be the total income of that person. So they have not given any exemption for, they have not spoke about any capital gains and all. Just a minute. So straight away, so straight away, so straight away, even long term capital gain, I made a mistake here. I made a mistake here. So even long term capital gain is also taxable at 18.5% only. I think in my next class, I need to specifically highlight this point. I need to highlight specifically this point. So in, when you are applying AMT, whatever the nature of income, straight away you calculate tax at 18.5%. Even if it is a lottery income also, I think 18.5% only will apply. So this is a new point which you, every one of us are learning from this particular MTP. Getting it? If at all you already know, know this point, well, good, proceed. So this is also taxable at 18.5%. So 1,8,000 multiplied by 18.5%. 1,8,000 multiplied by 18.5%. Because no, I remember when we are computing math for companies, no. We don't do like this. We do split like this and then compute. Don't know. We'll see. 
So 19, because that is what suggested answer also. I mean, I see answer also. So 17, 9, 10. So 17, 9, 10. Sorry, 19, 7, 10. Plus uh, 737, 733. Plus 4 percentage. 787, 750. Just a minute. So that's what, right? I think uh, just you, you look into this answer computation. So our computation is absolutely right. So 40, 95, 750. 40, 95, 750. Absolutely correct. On that 18.5% plus S. So now, since the AMT tax and even normal regime tax is low than 115 BAC, I'll go with normal tax regime. And difference between these two, 788020, sorry, 788020 minus 474850, 313170. 313170. This is treated as AMT credit. Yeah, here they have given 313170, which shall be carried forwarded for 15 years, 15 assessment years. That's it. So let's proceed to the next. Let's let's proceed to the next problem. Next. Mrs. Sia D. Souza is an American, got married to Kabir of India in UR on 14th February 2023 and came to India for the first time on 18th March 2023 means she came to India on 20 to 23 year for 20 to 23 year 18th March only she came so only 11 12 days she stayed not a resident she left for Australia on 16th August which means 1st April to 16th August she stayed in India only and she's a foreign citizen 120 days logic and even uh, 6 one a demon resident logic that and all will not apply she stayed for less than 182 days sir. so she's obviously non-resident and she she returned to india again on 23rd march okay so 23rd march means uh, 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 so they are 9 days they are 9 days august 16 days then uh, august before july 31 june 30 may 31 april 30 total 147 days she stayed in india 147 days she stayed in India and remember she is an American citizen she is not an Indian citizen so 120 days logic plus 365 days and above that logic will not apply and uh, 120 days logic will not apply and by the way she is an American citizen right by the way B2 condition we can apply no B2 condition we can apply 60 days or more during the previous year 365 or more during the past four years but I think she has not stayed in the past four years at all in India so that information is not given so straight away non-resident next on 1st April 2023, she has purchased a flat in Mumbai, which was let out to Samir on a rent of 26,000 per month from 1st June 2023. Source of income is in India. Though she is a non-resident, since source of income is in India, it is taxable. She has taken a loan from Indian bank for the purchase of this flat uh, on which bank had charged an interest of 205 rupee, sorry, 205,000 2, 2, up to 31st March. So, she rented, she rented from 1st June. So, 26,000 multiplied by 10 months from 1st June to 31st March it is 10 months so 2 lakhs 2, 2 lakhs 60 2 lakhs 60,000 minus municipal taxes information and all not given flat 30 percentage flat 30 percentage so how much it is 2 lakhs 60,000 minus 30 percentage 1 lakh 82,000 plus how much is the interest 205 2 lakh 5,000 so minus 205,000 so minus 23,000 is the loss from house property. A loss from house property can be set off with other heads of income. We'll see under what section. She opted out of default tax reason. She shifted out of the DTR. So she can set off house property loss with other heads of income. So first paragraph, she's a non-resident. Second paragraph, we computed house property loss. Third paragraph. While in India, during the year 23-24, she had received a gold chill from her in-laws worth 150. In-laws means husband, parents. So gift, relative, exempted. 165000 from close friend so 165000 she has gift received gold chain right so that is from in law 165 i think probably this cash cash gift more than 50000 fully taxable income from other sources is equal to 165000 fine from the information given, given above you are required to determine her residential status and compute a total income chargeable to tax for assessment year 2425 assuming she shifted out of the default tax regime are a very simple problem la so 165000 minus 23000 set off you set off these two, no? So 165,000 minus 23,000. I think here main main key point what they tested is residential status only. So 142, the answer. So she is non-resident. Correct only 142. Over. Answer question is over.
briefly discuss the provisions of TDS and TCS under income tax law and determine the amount if any TDS has to be deducted in respect of the following payment. Mr. Harish bought an overseas tour program package for him and his family for 10 lakhs on 1st November. Here no, on or after 1st October. On or after 1st October. Getting it. So if at all you are buying any tour package. Just a minute, I think the date is 1st uh, October. Correct only. On or after 1st October. Before 1st October, flat 5% on the tour package. But now, up to 7 lakh, flat 5%. Beyond 7 lakh, 20% is the TCS. 206C clause, you know, 1C or 1G, something is there. Just a minute. Yeah, 1G, correct only. So, it's 1G. So, like uh, 7 lakhs multiplied by 5% and 3 lakhs multiplied by 20%, 95,000. Remember, if at all the remittance is before 1st October 2023, flat 5% only on the tour package, on the entire package. So, that's it. The TDS is totally 95,000. And second one, Aditya pays 55 lakhs during 23-24 to Mr. Naresh for supply of labor. Okay. It's not 94C. Observe. For carrying out construction work is factory. Aditya turnover for last year is less than 95 lakhs. Less than 1 crore. Which means 194C will not apply. But for him, 194M will apply. So as per that, 5% TDS will apply. Since aggregate payment made is more than 50 lakhs. So 55 lakhs into 5%. 2 lakh 75,000 is a TDS. That's it. Look at the answers right away. 194M, 275. This is 95 over. Next. Mr. Ms. Priyanka, General Manager of ABC Limited Mumbai, furnishes the following particulars for the financial year 2024. Oh, this is third question. I think uh, this is again big question. What? He shifted out of default tax raising 115 BAC and the six marks question. So lengthy. Salary, salary, salary. It's like a total income problem. They give compute gross total income okay, only gross total income you have to compute not even total income not even tax only gta if you compute that's enough means all gets of income total enough she shifted out of dtr means she is not she is not going for dtr normal tax raising just a minute yes so now we need to compute gross total income so salary 40000 per month you see i will teach you how to compute rfa now very clever approach so just a minute Salary 40,000 per month, which means 4,80,000 yearly. I think there is no retirement concept. Just a minute. There is no retirement concept. Therefore, so for 12 months, we can take. So consider value of medical facility in a hospital maintained by the company. Since it is maintained by the company, perquisite value is zero. Medical facility zero. Next. Rent free accommodation. Always RFA solve at last. Consider RFA computation at last in the line item. So I will list out here RFA, but I will not compute working note one, but I will solve it later. Getting it? I will solve it later. I will I will keep it pending. Next. Housing loan at 7 lakhs given on 1st April 2023 at the rate of interest of 6%. No repayment was made at all. The rate of SBA 9.5. So 3.5% is perquisite. So 7 lakhs into, uh, you know, seven interest free loan, le, concessional interest rate. So 24,500, correct? Well, you know? 7 lakhs multiplied by 3.5 uh, percentage, 24,500 interest free loan, 24,500 per visit. So, this is considered RFA loan not considered. A dining table was provided to Miss Priyanka at her residence. Okay, dining table is given for usage. This was purchased on 1st June 2020 for 60,000 and sold to Priyanka on 1st May 2023. Here, one month. It was provided so uh, to a residence. RFA was provided. Rent free accommodation is provided throughout there, obviously, since they didn't mention anything. So obviously, dining table is also was there with, uh, with uh, Priyanka from the beginning. So for one month she is using as an employee. On first May, what she did, she purchased directly. So now there are two perquisites: use of mobile asset, transfer of mobile asset. First use of mobile asset. Use of mobile asset, dining table. What is the original cost? Use of mobile asset, owned, owned, owned dining table means for the company, 10% per annum of the original cost. Rented, no? actual rent. So, what is the original cost? The company purchased 60,000 rupees on 1st June. So, 60,000 rupees multiplied by 10% multiplied by 12. So, 60,000 10% divided by 12 is equal to 500 rupees per user. And the same, transfer of mobile asset, the same is transfer, dining table here. Getting it? Now, Dining table is transferred. If it is computed, which is transferred for every completed year of usage by the company, 50% WDB basis. For car, 20% WDB basis. Any other asset, mobile asset, if it is transferred to employee for every completed year, 10% SLM we will 
we will reduce from the original cost. Then the balance value will be the perquisite value. From that, whatever we recovered from employee, you know, we reduce it, balance will be the net taxable perquisite. So, okay, it is sold to Priyanka for 30,000 rupees. So, 60,000 original cost sold to 30, sold for 30,000. So, 1st June company purchased. 31st, 31st May 2021, one year. 31st May 2022, two years. 31st May 2023, not yet come. Before that, 1st May itself she told. So, only two completed years. So, two completed years means 10% per annum on the world. 10% is the 10% is the depreciation on SL method, right? So, 60,000 multiplied by 10% into two years, 12,000. So, what is the value of the asset sold to Priyanka? 60,000 minus 12,000 is equal to? 48,000 worth of dining table is given to Priyanka. For what price? 30,000 only. So, 18,000 is benefited to Priyanka. So, 18,000. I hope you understood how the numbers are. Only for completed year, depreciation will be reduced from the original cost. Then balance value will be compared with the purchase price. So, difference amount is the benefit in the hands of the employee. Next. Personal purchase through credit card provided by the company. Amounting to 10,000 was paid by the company. No part of this is recovered. So, credit card. How much it is? 10,000. Next, a Maruti Suzuki car which was purchased by the company on 16th July 2021 for 2,50,000 was sold directly to the SSU on 14th July. So, 16th July 2021 to 15th July, 15th July 2022, one year, 15th July 2023. Okay, so only one year, completed year, 15th July has not come. Before that itself is sold. So, only one completed year only we have to calculate the depreciation. So, 2,50,000 minus 20 percentage. 2 lakhs is the WDB value. It is sold to employee just for 1,60,000. 40,000 is a perquisite. So, transfer of car. How much is the perquisite? 40,000. See, what is important is not numbers. Concept is important. Focus on the concept. So, you can do really well in the exam. Other income received by the SSE is as below. So, other income means other than this. Deposit in PPF, it is ATC deduction and all. First of all, we are only liable to compute gross total income, not everything. So, salary income is over. Now, RFA. RFA, how to compute RFA? Now, you remember, previous year 23-24 up to 31st August and from 1st September, the perquisite valuation rule is different. Now, she has been given accommodation where in Mumbai. So, which means obviously population is more than 40 lakh. 10% of salary, sorry. 15, 25 lakhs, more than 25 lakhs population, 15% of salary per each month. Yes or no? Here it is 5 months. From 1st April to 31st August, how many months? 5 months. From 1st September, the perquisite value is 10% of salary for 7 months. Getting it? Because from 1st October, perquisite value is 10% of salary only. Whereas up to 31st August, perquisite value is 15% of salary only. Getting it? So now, Salary means what? For, for 5 months, how much is the salary? First of all, sal salary means what? Basic plus DA for retirement plus bonus plus commission. Taxable portion of elements only we should take. Only elements that to taxable portion only we should take. Facilities to non-monitor perquisite that and all we will not take. Basic is how much? 40,000 per month. DNS is not there. Bonus is not there. Commission is not there. Any commission, it's percentage of percentage of turnover or fixed commission, whatever it is. Any elements, telephone, medical, whatever, elements are only zero. So, what is the salary per month? 40,000. So, 40,000 multiplied by 5 months, multiplied by 15 percentage, how much? 40 into 5 into 15 percentage, okay, 30,000. And here, 40,000 multiplied by 10 percentage, multiplied by 7 months. So, 40,000 into 7 into 10 percentage, 28,000. So, perquisite value is 58,000. Perquisite value for RFA is 58,000. So, what is the total gross salary? Now, remember what we are computing is gross salary. 480,000 plus 58,000 salary plus 2,400. Uh, okay, interest free loan. 500 use of mobile asset. Transfer of mobile asset 18,000. Credit cut 10,000. Transfer of car 40,000. So, total salary, gross salary 631,000. So, is there any profession tax information at all they have given? Stand deduction, you know, she can claim. Even if, it, even if at all she is claiming. So, this is also considered. Even if she is declaring income under 115 BSE, standard deduction is still applicable. That's it. So, minus a standard deduction, 50,000. So, is equal to 581,000 is the salary income. Then, what are the other incomes? Interest on FD7, specified mutual fund 3, interest on bank deposit of a minor married daughter, interest on bank fixed deposits of a minor married daughter, 
minor daughter first of all that's it 4000 10 subsection 32 she can claim rate 1500 so 7000 plus 3000 minus plus 4000 minus 1500 12500 is total income from other sources after clubbing so 12500 so what is the gross total income 581000 is equal to 593 500 so 1032 adjustment also they tested remember 593 500 so let's look at the answer absolutely correct thank god then actually i'm recording this on 8th you're having exam on 9th right 9th Wednesday, 9th uh, may i'm recording this on 8th may 945 see this 8th may 945 we are habituated to work hard more than students. Miss Ravi and Sons, a partnership firm consisting of two partners reports a net profit of 7,58,000 before deducting the following partnership firm. So, which means 40B provision they are testing. Salary of 25,000 each per month payable to working partners of the firm as authorized by the deed. How much salary we will decide later. Depreciation on plant investment at 32. First, we should claim we should reduce that for computing big profit. Interest on capital 15% per annum. Only 12% per annum is considered that too it is as per deed. So indeed it is contained. So only 12% is allowed. Only after reducing interest on capital, only after reducing all deductions under PGBP except remuneration to partners, then you will get book profit. The amount of capital eligible for interest is 6 lakhs for both the partners. That's okay. Carry forward loss of previous series 50,000. That's a different adjustments. What is the book profit of the firm under 40B? What is the amount of salary that can be paid to working partner? So set off and all before, before applying set off only we will calculate book profit. So they are asking how much salary can be paid to working partner. What is the book profit? So computation of book profit. So computation of book profit. So what is the book profit? You know, uh, income from business or profession. What is the income given under as business or profession? 7,50,000. 7,50,000. Minus depreciation under section 32. How much it is? Depreciation under 32, 2,50,000. Minus interest on capital to the partner. 6 lakhs is the total capital, 12% per annum. So 6 lakhs into 12%, 72,000. That's it. So 7,50,000 minus 2,50,000 minus 72,000 is equal to 4,28,000 is the book profit. Now, second question is what? Amount of salary that can be paid to partners. How much it can be paid? Up to 3 lakh book profit, 90%. How much it is? 2.7 lakh. On balance book profit, 128,000. Multiplied by 60 percentage. So 128,000 multiplied by 60 percentage. 76,800. I hope you remember the provision. 2,70 plus 76,800 is equal to 3,46,800. This is the total remuneration the firm can pay. But how much firm paid? 25,000 per month to each partner they paid. For two partners, 12 months, 6 lakhs they paid, which is wrong. So only 346 is the maximum reduction for the firm. So now, what is the income of the firm? 4,28,000 minus reduction how much? 3,46,800 or 6 lakh whichever is lower. So, 4,28,000 minus 3,46,800, 81,200. This is the income of the firm. For, for this, you can set up the broad forward loss of 50,000. So, net income of the firm is 31,200. But that is not asked in the exam. They, that is not asked in the question. Only salary and book profit. So, uh, book profit we computed. So that's it, book profit will be computed. How much remuneration the firm can pay? Yeah, book profit is correct. So how much the firm actually can pay? Maximum allowable is this much. Actual remuneration paid is 6 lakhs. Maximum allowable is this much. Book profit is 4,28, correct only. Next. The following are the details relating to Roshan, a resident Indian, relating to 31st March 2024, okay? A set up and carry forward problem, huh? it's very easy, very easy. Next. Short term capital gain 150. Loss from house property. Loss from speculation. Loss from card games. Loss from card games. Ignore. Yes or no. Loss from speculation. Uh, 73A. Just a minute. So not even 73. Section 73. You can only set off against speculation business. So this is untouchable. This is to be ignored at all. Brought forward long term capital loss can be set can be set up only against long term capital gain. So this is also untouchable. Dividend from ABC, this is income. Loss from T business. T business, no, 40% only treated as business income. 60% is treated as what? Agriculture income. 40% is what? 160,000 into 40%. 42,400 is only treated as business income. Fine. So this is the information. We'll see. 
Short term capital gain is there. This is taxable. Loss from house property. I can set off these two. House property loss can be set off against other heads of income. Other heads of income. But remember, up to 2 lakhs only you can set off. That to 115 BAC for all you're opting, you can't. So, you see, you are required to compute taxable income of Roshan for the assessment year 2425 if he has exercised the option to shift out of DTR. So, he is not going with the DTR. Very good, actually. So, you can set up house property loss with other heads of incomes also. Ascertain the amount of loss that can be carried forward ultimately. Okay. Mr. Roshan's wife, Shamita, is employed with Ray Limited at a monthly salary of 25,000 where Roshan holds 21%, substantial interest. If, if at all, spouse is getting any remuneration from a concern where the other spouse is having substantial interest, the remuneration for that spouse is clubbed in the hands of the husband. This clubbing will not apply. The remuneration is paid to spouse because of the professional technical qualification or because of the work she is performing. So, Shamir is not adequately qualified. So, fully 25,000 multiplied by 12 months is equal to 3 lakhs. Minus standard deduction, 50,000 rupees. So, how much is it? 2,50,000, it can be clubbed in the hands of the husband. So, now, now let's look at. So, income from salary is how much? Income from salary is how much in the hands of Roshan? So, 2,50,000. Is there income from house property? No. 50,000 loss is there. That we will carry forward. Yes or no? Because house property loss can be set up with other heads only up to 2 lakhs. Just a minute. Uh, how much is the house property loss? 2 lakh 50. So I set up with capital gains 1 lakh 50. So to some extent 1 lakh 50. Still I have 1 lakh. Out of that 1 lakh, no? So this entire amount I set off. So here 1 lakh 50,000 I set off. So still I have 1 lakh. Out of this 50,000 I will set off with the beneficial treatment. So either I can set off from, either I can set off from, by the way, one more point you have to remember. Loss from business, no, you can't set up with other heads of income. Except, I mean, you can set up with other heads of income except the salary. Yes or no? Fine. Anyhow, we have dividend income so much. So, loss for 42,400. So, 11 lakhs is there, right? Minus, I will set up 42,400 PGBP loss. Minus, house property loss still 1 lakh is there. Out of that 50,000. 50,000 only I can take because out of 2 lakhs, 50, only 2 lakhs is eligible for setup against other heads. Only 2 lakhs is eligible. So, 50,000 anyhow I have to carry forward. So, remaining 2 lakhs, no. So, 50,000 I have to carry forward. 2 lakhs. Now, out of that 150, I will set up with capital gain. Then 50 I have. That 50 I will set up with the dividend income. That's it. So, 11 lakh minus 40 to 400 minus 50,000 is equal to 10 lakh 7,600. Is there any other income? Just let me see once. So, this 40 to 400 is only the loss I will consider. Yes or no? 60% is agriculture income. So, loss from agriculture income is to be ignored. So, this is loss, remember, not income. So, 40 to 400 is law, only business loss. Remaining 60%, no, that is also, that is an agriculture related loss. If income from, exempt, if in, you know, loss from exempted source has to be ignored. That's the logic. So, that's why I didn't consider that loss. So, 11 lakhs income. This is to be carried forwarded. This is untouchable at all. This is to be carried forward as it is and because loss from speculation business can only be set up with income from speculation. Here there is no speculation. So, we, we just have to re-carry forward and this and all we set off. So, 10,7600, 10,7600 and plus 2,50. So, I think uh, other sources after set off all that. So, 10,7600. So, totally 10,7600. 10,7600 plus 2,50 is equal to 12,57,600. This is the total income. And what are the losses that he has to carry forward? He has to still carry forward, you know, uh, long term capital loss brought forward. That she will be carry forwarding. Speculation will not. That she'll be carry forwarding. House property loss of 50,000 will be carry forwarding. That's the three losses. We'll see. Yeah, that's it. 157,600, that's it. Presentation. Presentation is important. You please focus on presentation. I'm just explaining you the answers only. That's what my responsibility right now. It is regarding filing of written of income. Ma. Filing of written of income. This is quite easy. Strike theory question. This is also 139A, other related side theory question. You just go through. Problematic part, I explain. That's it. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this. Oh, that's it. Remember in this one, one new point which I learned, which I learned is AMT is same for all long term capital gain, lottery, everything AMT is same. AMT, if at all AMT you are calculating whatever the income is there. 
in that adjusted total income every income is taxable flat at 18.5 percentage even on lottery income even on 112a income even on 112 income even on 3 one income whatever income so i think this we specifically never discussed in the classroom i think through this problem we discovered this